Raga and Tala in the authentic Indian classical music tradition are very much at the heart of the melodic and rhythmic structure of Sukanya. The fundamental thing to know about Indian classical music is that everything is based on a drone. And there's a reason for that, that the drone represents the, the primal, the, the fundamental sound. In Indian philosophy there's a concept called Nada Brahma which basically means that um, the universe is sound. Uh, everything is connected through sound, but um, after all, every, everything in the universe is vibrating, so that's a, a really good metaphor for that. Uh, and that's the reason why the, the fundamental sound is always present there in a recital. If you have a fundamental sound, that sound itself is built up of um, notes in the harmonic series. There's, there's a relationship there. So if you play a continuous tone on, on any instrument, um, there will be the fundamental, there'll be the fifth, which are five notes above that fundamental, very quietly in the background. Um, and then it goes on the third, um, seventh, and so on, all the way up through the harmonic series. So actually, when you play this fundamental sound, you're encompassing virtually everything because there's this mathematical relationship within that sound. So from that fundamental sound, then the raga is derived. And the raga is a, is a collection of notes somewhere between a scale and a melody. So it's, it's not a scale, it's not a melody, it's like a, a, a mixture of the two, so there's, there's a lot of flexibility in that. It, it's a choice of notes from the harmonic series, from that fundamental oneness, if you like. If, if you take la, 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 a sequence of notes like that, that's a raga known as raga of the flying swan. And that's a, that's a very sort of open, open feeling it has to it, and it kind of communicates that sort of openness and expression, flowingness, la, 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 in the sound. You can, you, can, you can see that, that flying swan, and feel that kind of open, open feeling. And that's simply because of that selection of notes over a period of, of hundreds, thousands of years um, have, have been shown to communicate that emotion from one person to another. But it all comes from that the primal, primal source. That, that's taught from generation to generation, uh, teacher to pupil, and through the, um, the handing down and the trying out, if you like, of, of, of these different raga forms, it's been a process of continual, really, refinement down the generations. The other important concept is tala, which is the rhythmic cycle. And when you combine the tala with the raga, you then have a really firm, solid structure for the most free-flowing improvisation. Uh, if we take the most common tala, that's known as tintal, which is a 16-beat cycle. And that rhythmic cycle will be played on the tabla, if it's a North Indian classical performance, or the mridangam, which is the double-headed drum, if it's a South Indian classical performance. The two, um, North and South, are, are different, actually, different approaches. But they have a lot in common, but there are clear differences as well. Uh, but one of the things we do in the opera is combine South Indian instruments, the, the mridangam in particular, with North Indian tabla. So there's a kind of, not only east-west, but there's north-south going on there in, in the opera as well. If, if you have 16 beats, so uh, the tabla will play da din din da da din din da da tin tin na da din din da then da din din da again. That gives you the 16 beats, and above that, you will have um, all sorts of rhythmic uh, extemporization going on. But the, the 16 beat will always be there. And a, a key thing people could listen for, perhaps in the opera, is the concept of the tihai, which comes as a uh, if you like a musical punctuation, it's something that's used in Indian classical recitals a, a lot to give not only the performers but the audience the, the sense of the music structure. So in Western uh, music of the 18th century, we'd have a cadence, a plagal or perfect cadence or something at the end of the section. In Indian classical music, you'll have very often the tihai, and that's something that goes over the rhythmic cycle. So an example would be if I were to say tete kata. That, that's, that's a good one to demonstrate for people. So if I say that three times over a 16-beat cycle, so the 16-beat cycle is maybe going da din din da da din din da da tin tin na da din din then tete kata tete kata kata kene da tete kata tete kata kata kene da tete kata tete kata kata kene da and there you are on the on the first beat. 
So that's an example of how the rhythm, it, you, you play with it over the basic cycle. It's fantastic fun, not only for the uh, performers, but also for the audience, because when a performer in an improvised performance begins the tea high, if it's a very complicated one, the audience aren't sure if they're actually going to get to the end and get to that downbeat bang on target. So it's like watching somebody landing a plane in difficult conditions and, and not knowing whether they're going to actually hit the runway at the right time. So it can be really exciting and really sort of virtuosic for the audience and for the performers themselves. Dang 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 d